just brings up a case that recently I read about in the AMA journal about a doctor who prescribed psychotropic medicines for a woman for 25 years, and she was involved in a motor vehicle accident in which a, a woman riding a bicycle was killed. The estate sued the driver, but uh, I don't think the driver had good insurance, and they decided to sue the doctor who had prescribed the medicine. And that case went to the lower court and was thrown out, I believe, and then went to the appellate court. Can you tell us about that case? Sure, it's the and why it's significant. Yeah, it's the Vizzoni case. Um, let me take a step back. There's a lot of states here that have cases. New Jersey's one of them, where doctors can be liable to people other than their patients. Um, it's clear that they're liable to their patients for making a mistake, a medical malpractice type of mistake. But it's been argued by the AMA, by amicus briefs on behalf of the doctors, and the AMA and the state AMA, that we can't extend the duty of care to people who are not the patient of the doctor. Um, there's good reasons why that might be so. Um, but there are, in general, the law is moving in the direction away from what the doctors want. I can give an example, and we'll get back to the Vizzoni case if you, if you like. There was a case in Connecticut where a man went to the doctor to get tested for herpes. His um, potential lover was waiting for the results, and he wanted to tell her the truth, whether he did or didn't have them, um, have herpes. The, the doctor tested him and allegedly, apparently, said, you don't have it and the test results actually were positive, and he did have it, and he gave, he communicated herpes to his lover. And the question was, can this, um, can his lover sue the doctor for this? And um, there was a great hue and cry from the doctors and from the medical establishment saying that can't be, we can't be responsible for every lover that this guy now infects. Um, it's a good argument, it's just not the winner the law seems to be changing pretty clearly, at least for communicable diseases, that the doctors can be responsible for their own negligence when they know, when it's foreseeable, that somebody who's coming in for a test for, say, a sexually transmitted disease is going to have a lover. Now, there's a lot of questions that are left unanswered by that, like what is the doctor supposed to do if he tells the patient, this doctor didn't, but if he tells the patient you have herpes, does he have to violate HIPAA and medical procedure and tell, find the lover somehow and say, your guy's got herpes and you should know that. Um, there was a case in New Jersey in the 70s that the doctors, um, there was a Supreme Court case in New Jersey about someone who, a grandfather who was tested for tuberculosis, was wrongly told he didn't have it. He came home, kissed his grandchildren and his daughter-in-law, and gave them all tuberculosis. New Jersey Supreme, I mean, that's a pretty easy case in a lot of ways. If you think about it, put aside the fact that you're a doctor and that I'm a lawyer here, and say, well, what, uh, what could the court possibly have decided here? We're going to limit the doctor's liability just to grandpa, who has tuberculosis, so there's no case. But what grandpa's done, the worst thing that he can think of is infect his grandchildren, and he did it because of the doctor's negligence. It seems a pretty easy case to me. It creates issues for doctors, and it sends us down a road that the rules of which are uncertain, but it's pretty clear that the law is heading in that direction. In Massachusetts, in New Jersey, in Connecticut, in New York, there are cases where they're saying, Doctors, particularly in communicable diseases, in the psychiatric illnesses, and perhaps with car accidents, um, where the doctors can be liable to people other than their patients. Yeah, it's no coincidence that those states you mentioned are the states with the highest rates of malpractice, by the way. Well, that may be. New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New York. You know, All right, well, I should have tried to pick Texas or something, but I don't think the doctors are going to be able to prove the way the AMA briefs tried to argue that there's a basis for saying the doctor's not responsible if he misadvises about tuberculosis and you give your grandchildren tuberculosis, that the doctor someone's going to get off the hook by saying, it's not my, you know, that wasn't my patient. But I heard you say that's one of the tenets that you have to bring to have malpractice, that you have to have a duty to a patient. Well, you have to have a duty, and the way the doctors would define duty is duty to the patient. You're right. But that's not how the courts define it. Duty is one of those things, I don't want to get too technical about the law stuff, 
because doctors are listening to this, but the duty is a question of public policy. So you can, it can be changed. The, the, you can say it's, it's healthy for us to change our notion of what a doc, who a doctor has a duty to um, as, you know, as genetic testing changes, as the ability to test for diseases changes, do, because the purpose of tort law, law are twofold. One is, of course, to compensate somebody, to get money to somebody who's been harmed by a mistake. And that's the easy one. That's usually the patient. But the second part is how do we discourage bad behavior? How do we discourage negligence? If somebody says, you don't have tuberculosis, Grandpa, um, and you do, one of the ways to discourage it is to make sure that all the people are compensated who've been harmed by that bad advice and, and um, get the doctors to, if I dare say this to you, pay better attention to giving information like that. Oh, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree. I'm just talking about legal principle, though. That opens the door for a whole variety of problems for doctors. It does. Uh, we may be reluctant to treat patients with, with medicines that may be sedating because of the fear that someday they may get in a car accident. Uh, or th there's a whole host of scenarios you can imagine. Sure. That, that Genetic that, testing raises a lot of it, too. Who do I have to tell that you've got, there's a cystic fibrosis case. Do I have to tell the parents of the kid who's got cystic fibrosis that if they have another child, the child's going to have cystic fibrosis? Even though that's not my patient, my patient is the child. Do I have to tell? There's a case on that, in fact, in New Jersey about that. And the question is, do we want the doctor to tell? And I think the answer is yes. And the way doctors can at least be somewhat protected is by not making that mistake. It does subject them to more damages and more liability and more problems when you expand the class of people that can sue the doctor for making a mistake. But do we want to do the other thing and say, hey, Grandpa, you're on your own. You gave your, you gave your grandchildren tuberculosis. The doctor gave you bad advice. That's why you did it. But there's no remedy for that. That's your problem. Yeah. Maybe he feels bad about it. Maybe that's enough. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. OK. <laughs> I don't want you on my next jury. But Going back to the Vizzoni case, um, yeah. what, what was the final outcome, the adjudication of so that case? So I, I think there was some uh, celebration in the medical community that the Vizzoni case was won by the doctor, um, Dr. Lerner, I think it was. It was. Um, the problem is that if you read the case, it was not a victory for the principle that a doctor can't be liable to a bicyclist who isn't his patient and gets hit by a car of the person who was his patient. In fact, the case said, that's the easy part of this case. Um, just like we have, they call it social host liability. If you get your friends drunk and then they get in their car, you can be liable. Just like there's dram chop liability of a bar doing that. We want to make sure that we discourage people from getting their friends drunk and sending them out in cars. Doctors have to do the same thing. We want to discourage that. And so it's an easy leap here to say, the doctor, Dr. Lerner would have been liable to this bicyclist, but then they said there's absolutely no proof in this case that the medicines caused her to ride directly into the bicyclist and kill her. And so it was a failure of the, of the third element that I was talking about before of proximate cause. So there is a duty to the bicyclist, but in this case, you weren't able to prove that the doctor's negligence, alleged negligence, and not telling his patient, don't drive when I'm giving you Cymbalta and these other drugs, um, wasn't the cause of the accident. Yeah. So the doctor won, but the, the battle might have been lost or might be on yeah. his way. I think the lost. battle is lost. The question is the contours of what doctors have to do um, for, to be liable to others. There, it's clear that they are in some circumstance now. One of the questions that's going to come up is what is the doctor, is it enough for the doctor to tell the patient? So in the cases like the tuberculosis case, and the, uh, does he have to just tell grandpa correctly, or the, the herpes case, tell the patient, you've got this. Does that, is that, is, does that take care of the duty? And there's a case in New Jersey um, that says, we're not sure, we don't know if that's enough. And that creates other problems for doctors. Do they go out and find the other person and say, well, I've got some, you know, something private that they're not allowed to tell. How do they take care of the duty? Is it enough to tell the patient? It's an unresolved question in New Jersey and probably throughout the nation. Yeah. I'll tell you an interesting case that happened to me, and it was a kind of a dilemma. I was the director of a clinic in, in a hospital, 
And the nurse who worked with me, uh, we became friends, but she was, a, she was the nurse who worked in the clinic. Her husband came as a patient. Now she happened to be pregnant, and he told me that he was having an affair with somebody else and that he had chlamydia. And uh, what should he do? So this woman is pregnant, which he had a relationship with his wife, but he had this affair, and he's got a sexually transmitted disease. What should he do? I must say this was 25 years ago, so. But uh, I said, well, you should tell her. Your duty is to tell your wife immediately that she could be infected and she's got to get checked out. I'm not doing that. I said, well, you have to. You have to do that. That's the right thing to do. If you don't tell her, I will. And he said, if you do, then I'll sue you because you violated my confidentiality. Well, he wasn't seeing you as a, as a patient, though, right? He was. He saw me as a patient. Oh, he was your patient. Okay. He came to the clinic as a patient. To said, be treated for chlamydia? For chlamydia. And told uh, me, my wife, I have, I'm having an affair with somebody, and I got, must have gotten it from her. But I had sex with my wife after the fact, and I'm worried about that. What do you think I should do? I said, well, you have to talk to your wife immediately and tell her, well, I'm not doing that. She'll do, I'm not doing it. I said, then I will. And he said, then I'll sue you if you do that. And I thought about it, and I said, he's probably right. It probably is a violation. I don't think we even had HIPAA in those days. I don't even know. So I didn't do anything. The only thing I did was I said to his wife, make sure your gynecologist checks you for venereal disease. <laughs> just to be thorough. That's all I did. But I don't know how that would be handled today. Did she do that? Did she get checked? I think know? she did, yeah. I, I really don't remember whatever happened, but that was a terrible mm. situation to be in. You know, the professionals, doctors and lawyers, the, the, the burden of secrets, it's just, you know, you're in those situations sometimes and there's not really a great answer there, right? Yeah. I don't know if the law is any different now, if that would require me to report him, but it certainly would require me to report if he had said, I'm a, or if the wife had said my husband is sexually abusing my kid. Right. In that circumstance, I, I know that I have to report. Right. And I'm protected. There's a statute on that, but uh, on chlamydia, I don't think there's a statute that you have to tell. Yeah, and I, I really don't know what the right answer would be, and I don't know if I, he could have sued me for telling her. Well, he probably could have sued, at least under HIPAA, for a technical violation. I'll just tell you, it's not a very good case. I would, you know, not just because we're friends, but I would, <laughs> I would take your case and we'd win it, if not a hundred times out of a hundred, pretty darn close, because... The jury would be sympathetic. Yeah, and they wouldn't be too sympathetic to him, if you think no. about it. You, you yeah. Know. It's pretty odd circumstances, yeah. though. It caused me a lot of angst. That um, does happen. We get some secrets that we wish we didn't, didn't have. 